In the verdant hills and shadowy forests of ancient Greece, there lived a nymph named Echo. She was an oread, a mountain nymph, known for her enchanting voice that could suit the wildest of creatures and bring joy to the hearts of those who heard her songs. Echo loved to wander through the woods, her voice dancing on the wind, blending with the rustling leaves and babbling brooks. Her laughter was as clear as the morning dew, and her words flowed as freely as the mountain streams she cherished. But Echo was not just known for her beauty and voice, she was also notorious for her love of conversation. She could talk for hours, her words weaving tales that captivated the gods and mortals alike. It was this gift of gab that would lead her to a tragic fate. One day, the great king of the gods, Zeus, descended from Mount Olympus to visit the forests where Echo lived. Zeus was infamous for his many affairs, and he often sought the company of nymphs, despite being married to Hera, the powerful queen of the gods. To conceal his infidelities, Zeus relied on the help of Echo, who would keep Hera distracted with her endless chatter. Whenever Hera came close to discovering her husband's dalliances, Echo would intercept her, engaging her in long and winding conversations. Hera, growing increasingly frustrated by Echo's persistent presence and constant chatter, began to suspect that the nymph was up to something. One day, when Hera found Zeus absent from Olympus, she descended to the earth, determined to find him. As usual, Echo appeared before Hera, trying to distract her with stories and flattery. But this time, Hera was not to be swayed. Realizing the nymph's true purpose, Hera's eyes blazed with fury. So, you dare to deceive me, to aid my husband in his treachery, she thundered. Before Echo could defend herself, Hera raised her hand, her divine power surging forth. From this moment on, you shall no longer speak freely. Your voice will be taken from you, and you will only be able to repeat the last words spoken to you by others. This is your punishment for your deceit. With that, Hera's curse fell upon Echo. The nymph opened her mouth to plead, but no words of her own came out. She could only echo the last words Hera had spoken, deceit, deceit. Stripped of her voice and her ability to communicate freely, Echo wandered the forests in sorrow. The once joyful and talkative nymph was now reduced to a shadow of her former self, her only solace the familiar sounds of nature that she could still mimic. One day, as she roamed the woods, Echo saw a young man of extraordinary beauty. His name was Narcissus, and he was the son of the river god Cephissus and the nymph Liriope. Narcissus was renowned throughout the land for his stunning appearance, but he was also known for his cold heart. Many had fallen in love with him, but he had scorned them all, too proud to return their affections. When Echo saw Narcissus, her heart ached with a love so intense that she forgot her curse. She longed to speak to him, to tell him of her feelings, but she could only follow him from a distance, repeating the last words he said. As Narcissus wandered deeper into the woods, he called out, Is anyone here? Echo, hidden among the trees, eagerly repeated, Here, here. Startled, Narcissus looked around but saw no one. Come to me, he called. Come to me, come to me. Echo replied, her voice trembling with longing. Narcissus, thinking it was a game, smiled and said, Let us meet. Meet, meet. Echo whispered, stepping out from the shadows. When Narcissus saw the nymph, he recoiled in disgust. Why do you follow me? I would rather die than let you have me, he sneered. Echo, heartbroken, could only repeat his cruel words, let you have me, have me. Humiliated and rejected, Echo fled deeper into the forest. She could not bear to face the world, and she hid in caves and mountain valleys, her love for Narcissus turning into a deep, all-consuming sorrow. As time passed, Echo's grief wore her down. Her body began to wither away, consumed by her unrequited love and the pain of her curse. She grew thinner and paler, until eventually, her physical form faded completely, leaving behind only her voice. Her spirit remained in the mountains and forests, where she could still be heard, repeating the words of those who wandered through her domain. Meanwhile, Narcissus's fate took a dark turn. The goddess Nemesis, 
hearing the prayers of those he had scorned, decided to punish him for his vanity. One day, as Narcissus came upon a clear pool of water, he saw his reflection for the first time. Unaware that it was his own image, he fell deeply in love with the beautiful face staring back at him. Entranced, Narcissus could not tear himself away from the reflection. He reached out to touch the water, but the image dissolved with the ripples, leaving him desperate and longing. He spent days by the pool, unable to eat, drink, or sleep, until he too wasted away, consumed by his impossible love. In the place where he died, a flower grew, the Narcissus, with its delicate petals and poignant beauty, a symbol of his fate. Even after Narcissus's death, Echo's voice remained in the world, forever repeating the last words of others. She could no longer express her own thoughts or feelings, but she became a part of the natural world, a reminder of the consequences of vanity, unrequited love, and the wrath of the gods. Echo's story was passed down through the ages, a tale of love, loss, and the enduring power of the human voice. Though she was cursed, her spirit lived on, resonating in the hearts of all who heard her call, a voice that would never be silenced, echoing through time.